Hey guys, what's up? It's Finch here, back for the first time in a while. Sorry about my relative inactivity, I've just been a lot busy, but we do have a very important topic to discuss today. For those of you who don't know, Pokemon Home is being released, well, quite honestly, today. I'm recording this on the 29th of May. It should be coming out, you know, depending on where you are in the world, either later today or tomorrow, so very exciting news. With this coming up, we were able to have a council vote on the OU status of a ton of Pokemon. Annihilate, Basque Legion, female and male, Chi Yu, Gen Pao, Spathra, Fluttermane, Houndstone, Iron Bundle, Landorus Incarnate, Magirna, Palafin, Regileaky, Spectrier, Shifu, Single Strike, Zamazenta, and Zamazenta's Crown. As an extension of that, it came alongside the clause, which basically says that um, if Last Respects is um, the, the, the Pokemon have Last Respects, so Bastia Legion, male and female, and Houndstone all get banned, then we'll vote on Last Respects. So most of these votes are already uh, released publicly. I kind of released them one per day. And as you see here, we've got a whole slew of things. Spoilers. <laughs> Um, but that's been public information now, and a lot of people are, are interested in that. You know, I've been actually pretty pretty popping off on Twitter lately, so you know, if you want more consistent information from me, definitely check me out on there. But um, in the interim, I, I do want to go through all of my personal opinions and my votes as an act of transparency, but also because a lot of people said they were interested in something like that. I'll probably throw on a uh, clickbaity title and thumbnail just to grab some attention, but I'd like to spread the word, give my opinion on it. Obviously not in peak YouTube form right now. I just haven't been doing this very often once uh, once baseball season started and my work's busy season picked up It got a lot more challenging, but with that in mind I still want to be able to uh, to do this You know, maybe a video here and there a couple of months or once a month depending on you know my activity just being honest It'll probably pick up again once the colder season by me comes by Just because then life will slow down a little bit, but in the meantime I do want to uh, shed some insight on all of this so First and foremost, we're gonna go ahead and start with uh, the top of the list. I guess we'll start with Annihilate, so hop on the PS here real quickly. Annihilate is Uber, so Pokemon that were Uber, they um they needed to basically get enough support to get unbanned. So you needed over two thirds support to be OU. Unfortunately, Annihilate fell short of that, and my um, personal vote was also to vote it into overused. Uh, sorry, vote it in back into Ubers rather than into overused. Um, so in my opinion, it was rightfully put in Ubers before, and nothing much would change with it now. The big reason why would be the move Rage Fist in conjunction with pretty respectable bulk. 110 HP coupled with 80, 90 defensive stats is above average for sure. Couple that with potential for investment, it goes a long way. Rage Fist is an interesting move. It's a unique move where every single time you take an attack, it basically boosts another 50 base power. Let's say I switch in on a Core of Night U-turn or a Great Tusk's uh, Defensive Earthquake or a Ting Lu's uh, Defensive Earthquake, for example. These things can basically turn from 50 to 100 or 100 to 150, 150 to 200, and you're able to withstand numerous of those hits, especially when you have leftovers, the uh, potential for rest plus chest or berry, you'll have the alternative, and Drain Punch to heal as well, boosted by Stab. So it's all great and well, and it definitely makes it very hard to stop to begin with, basically meaning that any bulky team weak attacks from like Toxpex or Amoongus for example there they're gonna be abused and suddenly taken advantage of but couple this with the fact that Annihilate can use terrestrialization to turn into a water or a fire or a fairy or a dark or a um, steel type you know just some common types used before and suddenly you're able to really be hard to revenge kill you know things like Specs Dragapult like oh you're a ghost type that can revenge kill you but if you become something that's neutral to ghost suddenly Specs Shadow Ball is only doing 45% or let's say you are facing something like Iron Valiant and it's like, oh, Moonblast takes that out with ease, but you become a fire type, then suddenly Moonblast does under under 30%, probably even under 25%, quite frankly. And if you become a water type or a steel type, it's still neutral, so, uh, uh, sorry, it's still, it's still neutral to water or resisted by steel. So, you know, these, these things, you know, it's not gonna be able to 1v1 you. Suddenly you're doubling your crippling Rage of his power in the long haul and it becomes very, uh, very intolerable. So in my opinion, in a metagame with full terrestrialization, Annihilate definitely doesn't have a place in, in overuse standing. And as such, I voted accordingly. I think that's, you know, pretty straightforward. I think a lot of people understood this one. A lot of people did want to see it back in OU just because it's a very cool, novel Pokemon with an interesting concept behind it. And the power creep's going to go way up to begin with, but truth be told, it really invalidates an entire bulky side of the spectrum and offensively speaking it is very hard to revenge kill with terra in mind and 
that leads to getting multiple kills most games and also just being very hard just to pivot around and put some pressure on every single move and I don't really find that a very healthy dynamic personally so I'm glad it went to Ubers um, I believe it was one of the first things we voted on um, yeah as you can see here Nihilate, yeah. so it did get a good amount of support for OU but again it needed over 66.6% uh, so I voted Uber alongside Ema, uh, Star, and TPP or Team Pokepal. So, very happy about that result personally. Obviously, though, especially given the closeness of that vote, we'll, we'll look into it again in the future. Um, the next Pokemon I'm going to discuss, actually, I'm going to group them together, is going to be Blastia Legion female, Bastion Legion male, and Houndstone. Um, these three Pokemon all got voted to be banned pretty. Uh, pretty comfortably, 8-1, 7-2, and 8-2. Um, the reason why the number total is different is Slime Victini have stand on anything that's not released yet. Um, so you'll see those have nine, others have 10. But um, regardless of that, so all these Pokemon got banned. I mean, for those of you who don't know, Last Respects is one of the most crazy moves in the game. Um, basically, in the same sense that, um, let's just pull it up here. Oh. Sorry about that. So in the same sense that Rage Fist boosts your power every time you get hit by an attack, in the same way you don't have to get by attack, you have to have a team member die. So let's say I'm running a rain team with Swoop Swim Bash Legion, which already is pretty respectable offensive profile, 112 attack with water and ghost, two really good offensive types, especially ghost. Um, let's say my uh, my rain setter dies to set rain, you know, Pelipper or whoever it may be, that's one. And then let's say I, I trade a couple Pokemon, so let's say I'm down three or four teammates. Suddenly this is a 200, 250 base power move off of stab ghost and i'm faster than everything in rain and you realize now that the game is entirely 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 um just over like there's nothing you do to switch you either have a water type that can somehow live a boosted uh boosted water attack in rain which uh good luck finding that normal type that lives a boosted water type and attack in rain because it doesn't really exist or um some way of changing the weather and making it slower or you're done <coughs> Priority isn't even necessarily great here because Extreme Speed from Dragonite, for example, Ghost type or Sucker Punch from King Gambit might be able to help, but it could have Aqua Jet or Substitute. So yeah, you know, I mean, it's a fool's errand trying to truly reliably stop Bastion Legion with this. I mean, same reason why Houndstone, a much lesser offensive profile Pokemon with Last Respects was even crazier before and got quick banned basically on day one. Last Respects has been a move that I wanted to get rid of for a while now. And now that we have multiple Pokemon, multiple threads, Instead of having the banned Pokemon in Houndstone, we can default to banning the move since the move is in the common thread, and um, we can now preserve the Pokemon. So thankfully, uh, Bastion Legion, I voted Uber. Bastion Legion female, I voted Uber. Houndstone, I voted Uber. And the council consensus on those as well. That triggered a vote on Last Respects. Last Respects vote ban was unanimous, so therefore allowing Bastion Legion, Bastion Legion female, and Houndstone in OU. And last respects going to Ubers. So that's um that's really awesome in my opinion. A lot of people wanted Houndstone before and now uh their uh, calls are being answered. So I hope that people are happy about that. I know it took a little bit of patience, but all in all, um, I'm really happy with uh with this this proceeding. Yeah, no, I, I definitely this is probably one of the ones I care the most about. And we revealed it first for a reason. Well I revealed it first for a reason. I, I care to, to control that get a little bit there. So next up is Chiyu. Um let me put it this way. So Chiyu Let's say you want to run a Sun Team, and you got Shiyu, and you can throw Choice Spec Sonic because you want to see how strong you can really be. But on top of Choice Spec, you're also boosted by Sun. Okay, great, but you're also boosted by Beads of Ruins, which makes Special Defense that's good, go to okay, you're okay, go to bad, or bad, go to hard, but 0.75 multiplier. But then you, you want to do even more. So let's say you also want to boost it by uh, Terra, so you can become a Terra Fire type. But even better, you don't even have to rely on Flamethrower now, so you can run Overheat. So once you combine all of these things, then you're like, wait a minute, I want to throw all of my EVs, my effort values, in a special attack. I'm also going to give it a modest nature. And then you're like, wait a minute, I quite literally just broke the game. Yeah, that's all there is to it. You understand from there. Um, next up, we have Chen Pao. Chen Pao is one of the more controversial ones, but for me, it was very straightforward. I voted for it to go to overuse. Well, Chen Pao was an Uber previously, and that status as an Uber was justified. And in that suspect test, I personally voted to ban it. There are also some underlying facts about that. Chen Pao could have been quick banned even before the whole suspect test, but it never received enough support from the council or the player base to do that. On top of that, it could have had a very, you know, clear suspect verdict, but it didn't. It, it, in fact, it barely got banned via suspect, which was surprising to some because it was pretty broken. But nonetheless, when you have a Pokemon that barely gets enough support to be banned, 
in a suspect. Doesn't get enough support to be quick banned. And then you see things like potentially Zamazenta or Zamazenta Crown, potentially Earth Shifu Rapid Strike, Magirna, all potentially dropping, coupled with the fact that the metagame is getting faster, more priority inducive. And you're like, well, if Chen Pao barely got banned then, there's going to be more things around it now that can potentially check it. And the metagame pace might be less conducive towards it, you know, being faster and stronger and everything, then it's definitely time to give it a chance back. And, and that's some rough logic that that's more kind of eyeballing it, if you will. And unfortunately, with things like this, it's impossible to be perfect. But in my opinion, just given all the data we had, given all the opinion we had, given the community sentiment that we had, freeing Chen Pao is the least we can do. Because the big thing with all of these is, let's say Chen Pao starts so you. Or let's say uh, something else down there, like say McGearna starts you, which it is, we'll get to later. Um, if they're really that bad, we can just ban them. We could just quick ban them, you know? I mean, if we well, we could even suspect them if we need to, you know? Th th there's always the ability to undo these things. So something like this, I'm very confident that even if it does end up banned, we're making the right decision in letting Chen Pao go. And yeah, it's Swords of Ruin, much like Beads of Ruin is a great ability. And it's, it's pretty strong and fast, of course, but end of the day it is checkable it is containable it's not going to only ruin the metagame so we'll uh we'll see i'm very curious to see what happens i hope you guys are uh are as well next up we got um a spathra um a spathra clicks calm mind and then it clicks either protect or roost and then it gains a speed boost every turn and then eventually store power is super strong so you got to get your dark type to check it or your steel type to check it but then it could terrestrialize into a fairy or a fire or a fighting type and then suddenly that's boosted terror blast to get them and then you're like wait a minute i'm not playing pokemon i'm just playing terra slot machine weighted rng games i hate it here let me go play something else and that is why Aspathra is no longer part of our tier and it's still not part of our tier, despite Shed Tail being banned, just because it's outrageous as a cleaner. It's a guessing game. I mean, Terra Dark Cloud Sire is like a universal counter, but nothing else really exists. I guess um, it also was running, I believe my Gearna lost Heart Swap, which would, you know, kind of be unfortunate. Um, you know, there's some more Sucker Punch users out there now, but it can Terra away from Sucker Punch or Substitute. Um, all in all, it's just really unfortunate because the Spothra is a cool Pokemon with a really unique design and setup, but in the same light, you know it's it's ridiculous so i voted ban on it and i think we had like an eight two support on it um yeah eight to two okay next up next up next up we're gonna go down to fluttermane fluttermane was banned um like day one or day two fluttermane will remain banned i uh voted that way just because there are no real checks or counters to it um between terrestrialization it's a move pool potential to subvert checks and counters with with all sorts of things. It's really only checkable by priority and it could even, you know, tear a fire away from a bullet punch or tear a fairy away from a sucker punch. I, uh, I mean, it's just too strong. It's probably pretty good in Ubers if I had to guess. I, I don't really know anything about Ubers though, but man, that, that shit is strong, nasty. Uh, definitely no place in OU. So I think he got voted everyone but what one person. Um, Iron Bundle, kind of like Flutterman, but a little less, um, outwardly broken it has a bit better physical defense of course which is great although lacking in special defense but iron bundles combination of hydro pump and breeze drive plus ice beam i guess you could say um until we see something like empoleon drop in the game or uh you know chancy blissey take over is not much can be done i mean blissey is viable but not really it's super super compromised move pull wise which is unfortunate and you know it's reliant on heavy duty boots which we're gonna get more item displacement, I believe, so it's tough. But yeah, also bundle is just super strong and fast. Um, it's able to come in pretty readily. You could even use Terra if need be to get away from potential revenge killing efforts, or um, or bolster its Hydro Pump slash Freeze Dry to kind of uncountable levels. When I see bundle, I, I see something that is just a little too strong for OU, and there's nothing believing making me believe that it would change anytime soon. So. I voted Uber and it got well enough, more than enough support. Uh, Lander's Eye, you know, it's imagine all of the offensive attributes that's classified the bundle, but it's stronger in exchange for some speed. You know, it's still faster than average Pokemon by a good amount, by 101 base speed, I believe. But Lander's Eye, I mean, l let's do the thing we did with Chiyu, you're right. So you got not only the fact that it has sheer force, which is one of the best, but also Life Orb doesn't take Life Orb damage. And then also, you can go ahead and throw Earth Power on there, and now I believe it got Nasty Plot this generation as well, coupled with the fact that you can max out, you know, even modest, your special attack. Maybe you probably would run Timid more often, but still, you know, and you're like, well, 
Okay, that's fine. I thought I could take that, but it's got, you know, Sludge Bomb, or, uh, Focus Blaster, Psychic, or, uh, Knock Off. Um, oh, it doesn't get Knock Off. Okay, but Grass Knot, or, um, oh yeah, or your turn Yeah, and all these things. You know, there's basically, it can pick and choose what could check it. It's never going to touch every single Pokemon, but the fact that it has the ability to handpick its own checks and counters while being this fast, this successful, and not necessarily super fragile either, um, leads to a really unhealthy, you know aggressive metagame development where there's no way you can pivot around it really you kind of have to do guesswork to get around it and that that's not healthy that's not fun that's not even accounting for the fact that it can terra um it is true that it lost rock polish but it was really more of a breaker than a cleaner always you know people were obsessing over the fact that it lost rock polish i don't think that really mattered too much it didn't move the envelope for me i voted to put it in ubers and so did um so did everyone Besides from Victini Abstance, yeah, unanimous vote. Um, always fun to have those. Always fun when everyone agrees. Um, Magirna, next up. So I voted Uber on Magirna. Um, I don't think it's going to have much of a place in the overused metagame. Um, Magirna with Trastalization just looks like a demon between the possibility of a choice spec set, you know, being able to basically pick what it you know, wants to cripple a trick and pick what it wants to break through with the, you know, Terra Fairy specs boosted Flare Cannon, which is crazy. Um, and in the same light, you know, it can also uh, be a sweeper, you know, Calm Mind, Drain Kiss, uh, Stored Power Sets, uh, throw Terra Blast on them, you know, Shift Gear options, um, you know, and with Terra Blast, you kind of handpick your own counters again, um, with the potential to even beat things like, uh, like Cloud Sire, if you really need to, um, if Volcarona no longer is a checker counter with Terra either, um, you really can kind of decipher too much. And in my opinion, all the uncertainty, the unpredictability kind of makes it like a, a Volcarona, but two or three times better, honestly, because it has that bulk and that initial typing that's already so great. And it's move pool as it is, you know, it's great. You know, I mean, again, just move pool wise, shift gear, calm mind. I mean, you know, attack wise, it gets flare cannon, flash cannon, thunderbolt, ice beam, aura sphere, focus blast, draining kiss, stored power, options like encore to get free turns. You could substitute the scout, it could pain split to heal, you could shadow ball into specific things. Now does Terra Blast, trick with choice specs or choice scarf, you know, all these things. And truth be told, I, I don't see a metagame where it's gonna be contained. I mean on Trick Room it could be an you know, all setter plus breaker. On uh on offense it could be a sweeper and be it with screens or all, all together, you know, you could run all sorts of items, all sorts of move sets combinations. There's no limit to Magirna and you know, the sky's limit and in my opinion it doesn't really have much of a place in OU because of that. But um I was pretty strong and passionate about this one, but I got uh, I got outnumbered, you know, since it's new release Pokemon, it only needed, you know, over, it needed over two-thirds support to be Uber, and um, five people voted OU, one person voted Abstain, and only four people voted Uber, you know, myself, Ozma, uh, Star, and TPP all did vote Uber, which I was uh, happy about, but unfortunately, uh, Ruffed, Ema, uh, Mind Gaming, and JNP, and Zav, Gb, Zav, Gb? Stretch? We call we call them Stretch. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna try and butcher that. Um, all of them voted OU, and I respect the process. I respect the fact that you know democracy uh, should prevail, and votes are, are votes for a reason. So you know that's okay. If McGinn is in fact problematic, we could just quick ban it. And I'm happy to be on uh, the other side. And you know I'd love to be proven wrong and have a meta game with McGinn being healthy. Do I see it happening? No, probably not. But well, uh, we'll wait and see, you know, that's the fun of it. You know, that's the fun of these first couple days. Everything's going to be kind of up in the air. Next up is Palafin, uh, Sam the Palafin Man on Twitter. Very much eagerly awaiting this verdict, but unfortunately for him and all of the Palafin fans out there, it's still ridiculously broken. I mean, let's be honest, once it switches out, it just goes like Super Saiyan mode. Tom Bulk Up is virtually able to pick its own checks and counters with Terra. Um, and also just the fact that Jet Punch is so ridiculous. Um, even a choice band set is pretty nuclear. At least that's checking counterable by like the specific bulky water and grass types. But yeah, no, I mean, Palafin itself just derails gameplay. It can kind of dictate what it checks and counters. Also like surprisingly bulky, you know, it's just a really great Pokemon and a little too great for OU. It really derails games and that's unfortunate, but it's the reality of the situation. Throw a of water on it, by the way, and like Jet Punch is unworldly strong like especially the boost like holy crap and it has the ability to get those free turns to make those boosting situations so it's tough um next off is reggie lecky reggie leaky um i voted ou on it um it was mostly a procedural ban a procedural ou vote so reggie leaky 
it spans a national decks, which in my opinion is entirely irrelevant. It's such a different environment, such a different set of standards than OU. A lot of people cited that as like, oh, we should just ban Rev the Bat, and I don't love that. See, Reggie Lucky last generation was mostly like a UUBL Pokemon, a Pokemon that had a niche, but it was obviously very limited by its lack of coverage, and then this generation Terra came, and now, you know, Terra Ice or Grass can suddenly bolster its coverage. It could run something like Terra Blast with Thunderbolt, or, um, <clears throat> Thunderbolt, or what's that other, um, crap, um, I, I don't remember the other move it runs, I'm losing myself right now, holy crap, um, the, the ball, yeah, Electro Ball, whatever it may be, you know, happy that with, with Volt Switch, or Explosion, or Rapid Spin, of course, um, Screens, but, Nadalyn has the ability to cover um, ground types, hit ground types, and even potentially hit grass types, or um, whatever it may be. That's huge. Um, suddenly, you know, it would be walled by any ground type before this. You know, it'd be walled by Garchomp, it'd be walled by um, it'd be walled by Great Tusk, it'd be walled by Ting Lu, it'd be walled by Gastrodon, it'd be walled by Toad School, Sandy Shocks, etc. Um, you know, Iron Treads, Cloudsire. Now, it's able to hit a lot of them. I mean, let's say it's Terra Ice, you, you kill Garchomp. You're either killing or two killing Tusk. Um, Ting Lu probably lives a couple, but still. Um, you can't kill it because it's not electric type anymore, etc. And if you want to run Grass to hit Gastrodon um, and uh, Quagsire and Sandy Sh and, and Toad. And, and, well, I guess that's really it. Yeah, I, I, I said stress and Wishcatch. Okay, there, there you go. <laughs> you can as well. Um, I'm guessing that's going to kind of limit metagame. You know, Warpus, everyone's going to be running like Assault Vest, Iron Shreds, and Quagsire and shit. Um... So I think it's probably going to be banned pretty quickly, but I do want to see, I mean, because there's a big opportunity cost in forcing it trash those eyes. If you face one of those things, you're way down. You're basically playing a Pokemon down, like Volcarona in the Heatran last generation type of opportunity cost. So I was interested enough to see that. Um, a lot of people did want it banned. I understand that. I don't really regret my vote, but I am saying that I'm willing to, to ban it and kind of set the precedent that with Terra, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, I just would like to get that, you know, out of the way either way, you know, we'll see it and either it's terrible or hey, we have another cool addition, you know, we'll find out. I'm not too worried either way. Sorry, I just had to get some water. It's my first video in a hot minute and we're already like 22 minutes in and I'm like talking up a storm here. <laughs> uh, Spectre, Uber. Okay, next. Um, I don't think anything needs to be said there, you know, the Shadow Ball plus Terra draining kiss it got now, you know, it's, it's, it's a little ridiculous. So yeah, um. Urshifu Single Strike was actually the last Pokemon that was revealed. I'm actually going to spell the vote for you guys right here. Um, Urshifu S will be banned in SVOU. Um, everyone voted Uber besides TPP. Who wanted to give it a chance, which is understandable. You know, now I believe it has that new, um, is it Punching Glove, the item? Yeah, so that, that helps. Um, it's basically like um, last generation when it ran protective pads, like, but, like even better. Um, Urshifu did suffer a slight setback. We could pull his powers down seven power for maybe, but that's still it's still strong when it crits every turn. I mean, and now it also it gains Swords Dance, which screw out of here. And if you look at the Fairy distribution, which is a big thing, you know, there's no Buzzwall, um, no Clefable, Valiant can't really switch in super safely to any coverage move. Um, you know, these Pokemon, I mean, Screamtail doesn't even resist, and these Pokemon, you know, they're not going to wall it either. Um, the lack of fairies is really disturbing this generation. I mean, we probably see like a renaissance of like Sylveon and Florges, and like I don't, I don't want that. No one wants that. Um, yeah, no. I mean, it, it would just be a little too crazy. Um, nothing really swaps in because of that. I mean, if, if Clefable or Boswell or Physical Defense and Tangra existed, it might be a different story, but it just doesn't. And something like Chestnut's not going to live a repeated assault in close combat, unfortunately. So it's it's tough. It's it's tough. Um, <clears throat> next off, we are going to be. Um, We'll be talking about Zamazenta and the Zamazenta Crown. So these are two Pokemon that I personally voted OU, unlike its fellow fighting type, uh, their fellow fighting type or Shifu, which I voted to be uh, to be Uber. I voted OU on these two um, in part because, in my opinion, their story is like really incomplete, and I feel like they're not at the power level of other like mainline Ubers, you know, the box legend types of Pokemon, and. It deserves to, you know, do our due diligence see how they are in OU. But in terms of Zamazenta, I really do believe it can be like legit OU Pokemon. Um, it, it's strong, no doubt about it. And it has good enough bulk to really uh, be good. Because it's, it's bulky, but 
Dauntless Shield now only triggers once, so one time you get a plus defense boost, but 120 attack, even with uh, with with Choice Band, I mean, it's just not totally breaking the meta. I know we don't have the Fairy type, but we do have the Poison types, you know. Amoongus, um, Cloud Sire, not really going to wall it. Uh, Dundozo, you know, Goldengo, um, Volcarona, Toxapex, you know, Slowking, Skeldurge, you know. And I get it, it does have the coverage moves. You know, close combat, you can run Crunch on this, I believe. Uh, Ice Fang, it gets. Um, I'm sure there's more to it. Um, you know, probably not heavy some, but you know, Play Rough, uh, Stone Edge, Wild Charge, you know, great. It does have coverage hit everything, but to really break through the walls, you need to equip it with a Choice Band. And in my opinion, with all the Regenerator out there and with all of the Rocky Helmet out there, it is going to be really prediction reliant for it to make progress and maybe that'll be enough to where the game becomes all guesswork and it is broken in which case we'll, we'll happily just ban it but i don't think that's gonna be the case i think zamazenta might be ou to stay and i'm really excited about this i know it's super fast i know it's got such a flashy 660 based out so it's bulky but I, this pokemon can be contained and i'm kind of hoping it will be i'm also curious i know it doesn't get a swords dance um it does get howl though i'm wondering if like a howl three attacks set with like life orb or protective pads or something might be might be hit might be a hit um obviously you probably want wild charge over ice fang so that you can uh you can pick pex and slow king or, or just pack six crunch it's that you know but yeah i mean you, you customize the moves of course but yeah I'm, I'm curious to see what happens um we might even see ice fang we might see bolt beam plus cc um ice fang hits things like amoongus wild charge hits things like slow king and um packs and close combat hits the rest i mean this stall still leaves you pretty undesirable against something like a uh, a cloud sire or a dendozo or a goldengo i mean iron valiant yeah no it's kind of cool because like i, I think it's really generally gonna be like vocal Ron. like I, th this pokemon is wallable it's very wallable so i think bringing down an uber like this would be kind of cool i mean that's kind of what we're doing this for so yeah and then zama's into crowned um last generation it was worse this generation no I think it might be better because it got access to uh to body press which is gonna be crazy i mean i i can still see this pokemon being all you i actually thought it it got booted a little unfairly last generation truth be told i think a lot of people weren't willing to give it for a chance i'm hoping they do it this generation but um yeah now that it gets body press it didn't last generation with that mammoth 140 defense couple of the fact that the first time it gets a daunted shield boost and it has rusted shield uh, to change the form of course um to crowned um it doesn't have an item slot which is great but no i mean Iron Defense is going to be really potent on it, but I mean, I still think it's walled by a lot of things. I mean, I'm just worried that it forces defensive teams. It's going to be hard for offense to break, so I'm kind of curious about that. But yeah, um, it's going to start OU. Spoiler, that'll be real later today, but I voted OU on both, and that's kind of why. So yeah, um, with that said, you know, I think we're approaching the 30-minute mark. That's how I feel on all these Pokemon. I don't think the video production is going to be that great, but that's all right. Uh, let me know what you think down below. You know, comment, like, subscribe. Uh, if you want to see more videos on the metagame or more videos like this or fun stuff, you know, long-term Pokemon stuff, you know, voice your opinion. Uh, follow on Twitter, you know, let me know in the comments. I do care. I do read. It's just like, I don't have the time to be a content creator on the daily day grind, but, you know, maybe in the week-to-week -week or month-to-month -month grind, I do. Let me know, you know, I can make it work. All right, guys. Later. Thanks all for watching. Hail Big Stall. Bye.